Hello and welcome to another episode of Math with Mrs. Doomer. I'm your host, Mrs. Doomer. Today we're going to talk about solving rational uh, equations and we're going to get just nice and complicated. We're going to jump into a nice juicy problem, okay? This one's kind of got all the things you could want. It's got all the things I want. It's a nice, good, long, complicated problem. It's probably going to take us a little bit to get here. Okay, so this thing is, this type of problem, we're going to solve by making common denominators. But we're not going to like make common denominators, I mean we are, but we're going to multiply by a common denominator. And that's going to cancel a bunch of stuff out and it's going to be delightful. It's going to be so fantastic. You're going to be very excited. Pardon Charlotte's toy in the background, but my husband is making sounds. Okay, now that that went away. Okay, the way that we're going to do this is we're going to multiply by the least common denominator. Now, the only way to do that is to find the least common denominator. In order to do that, what do you need to do? Factor! I know, you thought you'd never have to factor again in your life, didn't you? <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so this guy right here, what multiplies give me negative 66 that adds to give me negative 5? Multiplies to negative 66 that adds to negative 5. That would be n minus 11 and n plus 6. Okay. You might be thinking to yourself, Mrs. Doomer, but there's that one there. What, what do I do? What do I do? What does it have? I don't know. It's like a whole number. It's got like, oh, weird things and weird pieces. Guys, cool your jets. It's fine. What's the denominator of one? One. Those of you who said zero, no. Uh -uh. No, that's undefined, right? The denominator of one is one. One over one, one. Pretty simple. Okay. So you can see this one has an n minus 11, this term has a 1, this is an n minus 11, and an n plus 6. So what is the common denominator? What's the common denominator? n minus 11 times n plus 6. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to multiply this whole equation by n minus 11 times n plus 6. What this really means is I'm going to multiply this term by n minus 11 times n plus 6. I'm going to multiply this term by n minus 11 times n plus 6. I'm going to multiply this term by n minus 11 times n plus 6. We're gonna see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna multiply this guy by n minus 11 times n plus 6. Now I'm gonna write it two times because I'm gonna reference it over here for this problem and I'm gonna reference it over here for this side. Okay, so n minus 11, n plus 6. So I've got it on here twice. It, I'm not multiplying by it twice, I'm multiplying by it one time. I'm just writing it twice so that we can like see it on both sides of the equation and then we're not like panicking about it. Okay, okay. So first things first, in this very first problem, when I multiply n minus 11 times n plus 6 times n over n minus 11, your n minus 11s are going to cancel out. Okay, so that's going to leave you with n times n plus 6, which is going to be n squared plus 6n. Are you with me so far? Now that cancellation only works for this first term. When I move on to the next term, that cancellation is undone. So the n minus 11 comes back, okay? When I multiply n minus 11 times n plus 6 times 1 over 1, nothing's going to cancel because there's nothing in the denominator. Now, I'm going to save myself a nice step because I am, in fact, going to have to subtract this. I already know what n minus 11 times n plus 6 is. You do too, without doing any math. Like, you don't have to do the math. It's in the problem. What is n minus 11 times n plus 6? right there. It's n squared minus 5n minus 66, okay? So I'm subtracting, so I'm going to put my parentheses so I remember that I have to subtract everything that comes next, and I'm going to write n squared minus 5n minus 66 and close my parentheses, okay? All I did was take these two things that I multiplied by 1 and multiply them together, but they were already multiplied together because they were already the denominator of that last fraction, equals. Now, I'm still using n minus 11 and n plus 6. I'm just using the ones over here so that they're closer and you can see them better, okay? So I'm going to multiply 22 times n minus 11 times n plus 6, all divided by n squared minus 5n minus 66, or all divided by n minus 11 times n plus 6. The n minus 11 and the n plus 6 are going to cancel out. So basically, this whole denominator cancels out. So what's left? 22. At this point, it's an equation you can solve. That's it. It's a nice, pretty, beautiful equation you can solve. So I'm going to just start by simplifying the left-hand side of my fraction uh, equation. 
So n squared plus 6n, and then I'm going to subtract n squared, but I'm going to subtract negative 5n, so I'm going to add 5n. I'm subtracting negative 66, so I'm going to add 66. Could you have distributed this guy? Uh, yeah. Is equal to 22. n squared minus n squared. Oh, man, that was lucky. Those guys canceled out. That's really nice, because now it's not quadratic to solve it. It's just linear. Ooh, fancy. 6n plus 5n is 11n plus 66 is equal to 22. Subtract 66 from both sides. I get 11n is equal to negative 44. Divide both sides by 11, n is equal to negative four. Now, before you decide that your final answer is that n is equal to negative four, you need to stop time pause. You need to think. Back in your original problem, you have excluded values. There are things that n cannot be because if you plug them into the denominator, it would make the denominator zero. Okay, and then blows up your problem, you get a whole bunch of undefined, and the world ends. Don't make that happen. Not any more than it already is. Okay, so, and negative 4. Can I plug in negative 4 minus 11? Yeah, it's negative 15, no problem. Here, when I factor it, it's negative 11. Can I plug it in there? Uh, yeah, you can plug it in here, you can plug it in there. How about this one? It was n plus 6. It's negative 4 plus 6. 2. Can I plug it in there? Absolutely. So, the correct answer to this problem is n is equal to negative 4. Now, there will be problems where your n squareds won't cancel. You'll have like two n squared, and you'll be like, oh man. And I'll be like, yes, because then you have to factor again. So you would set your equation equal to zero, you would factor, or you would complete the square, or you could graph, hey, or you could use the quadratic equation if that formula, sorry, the quadratic formula if none of that works. Totally okay. It's up to you. You do what's best for you. Factoring typically is the easiest way to go, but remember factoring is not the only way to solve. So if you can't come up with a way to factor it, doesn't mean there's no solution. It just means you don't know how to factor it. That's all. Or it's not factorable. Again, just because it's not factorable doesn't mean it's not solvable. Those two things are not equivalent to each other, okay? Not solvable and not factorable, not the same. Just means it's a little bit more gross, that's all, okay? So if you can't factor it, I suggest using the quadratic formula, x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. You're welcome. Okay, so if you can't factor, I suggest using the quadratic formula. So again, what are the steps of this problem? One, find the common denominator. Two, multiply every single term by it. Now, in the book, they actually literally write it out three times so that you have it once for each of the three different terms. Totally fine. If that's what you need to do to be successful, you do that. Find a common denominator, multiply by it. Three, solve whatever equation results. So you're going to get a nice fancy equation that has no more denominators. The denominators will cancel out. If your denominators have not canceled out, you've done something wrong. You didn't find the least common denominator, okay? So they should cancel out. If they didn't, you did something wrong. So go back, try again, okay? Common denominators, multiply all the terms by that common denominator, solve the equation, double check for any extraneous solutions that you can't plug in because they're excluded values. Okay, there you go. There you have it. There's your four easy steps. You've got this. Hope you had fun on Math with Mrs. Zimmer. Catch you next time. Bye.